All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is Joe Bacella here at Chaken Analytics, and I'd like to welcome you to part one of our options series tonight, trading options like an expert, beginning with introductory options. Now presenting today is Mark Chaken, founder and CEO of Chaken Analytics, along with Josh Midland, director of client success and head of, op of options strategies here at Chaken. As a reminder, this webinar is being recorded and a copy will be sent to everyone who has registered. Please submit your questions via the Zoom Q&A window, which you can access in the upper left-hand corner of your screen. Now, Mark and Josh are here to tell us about Mark's latest contribution to the financial industry, the Chaken Power Gauge Rating, a proven 20-factor model that uniquely combines fundamentals and technicals. Now, before we do get started, we need to read a quick options risk disclosure. Options trading carries a high degree of risk. Purchasers and sellers of options should familiarize themselves with trading with options trading theory and pricing and all associated risk factors. Please go to the uh, please check out our article characteristics and risks of standard options available on the Options Clearing Corporation website. Trading options can be much more complex and challenging than trading options and is not suitable for all traders. Traders should always consult a tax advisor about any potential tax consequences of their trading. So now to get us started, here's Mark Chaikin. Introduction about me. Many of you have been on our webinars before or are familiar with Chaikin Moneyfly. I've been on Wall Street for over 50 years, been using technical analysis along with fundamentals to find winning stocks. And when I was head of the options department at a regional firm called Tucker Anthony and RL Day for five years, I successfully showed the brokers and the firm's clients how to combine technicals with fundamentals to profitably trade options. Along the way, I've been mentored by some of the smartest and most successful institutional investors. And the reason that's important is that I created something that really fills a need that options traders have, which we're gonna tell you about, and that's the Chaikin Power Gauge Rating. It's how we analyze the fundamentals for you in a 20-factor model that incorporates the best information that successful Wall Street investors look at every day before they make decisions. It's the culmination of my life's work and it is the missing link for successful options trading because 95% of the people who trade options lose money. I learned that when I ran the options department at Tucker Anthony over 30 years ago, and it's still true today. So we're in this webinar, uh, my partner, Josh Minlin, who I'm gonna introduce in a second, I'll tell you a little bit about himself, uh, and I will share a lot of knowledge about options, starting with the basics because this is um, a basic options webinar. So with that, it's my great pleasure to introduce uh, my friend and partner, Josh Minlin. Thank you, Mark. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here and to be on the, uh, the webinar with Mark and with everybody here. Uh, I have a background. I've also been blessed to be able to be mentored by some top institutional traders, some uh, market makers and floor traders in options and other things like that. Uh, and what I do here at Shaken Analytics, I help people, our subscribers, understand what I've been blessed to learn from some of these very impressive people, people like Mark, who I'm, uh, who I get to work with here uh, and have the pleasure of working with here. So uh, that's, I've been doing this for over a decade. Uh, what Marcus said is absolutely right. 95% of options traders lose money. That's still true today. Uh, and my job is to make sure that Shaken Analytics subscribers are in that 5%. Mark? So we're going to look at some proprietary Chaikin analytics, uh, which will help you find bullish and bearish candidates for both swing trading and options trading. And this will include our power gauge rating and our proprietary relative strength. We're going to show you our six pairs of buy and sell signals to improve your timing because that's absolutely critical with options. Then we're going to show you how to use options play, which is a module embedded in Chaikin Analytics to find attractive options opportunities. For new options traders, we're going to show you how to quickly and easily find the best option candidates. And uh, Josh is going to spend some time to show you how um, options play helps you optimize strike prices and expirations. And that enables you to balance risk and reward. Uh, Chaikin Analytics 
has been endorsed by some of the smartest and most influential uh, traders and publications on Wall Street. This is a sampling of them. Uh, many of them are involved with options trading, like John Carter at Simpla Trading. Uh, uh, Barons and Benziga have given us some great shout outs. Uh, the point here is not to pat ourselves on the back, but to give you some confidence that what we're going to share with you is uh, not a Johnny come lately approach. It's been blessed by some of the smartest and most successful hedge funds, investment firms, uh, and news organizations and media on Wall Street. Now, we'd like to start off with a question. Joe, I don't know if you have a, had the time to get a poll teed up, but the question I'd like you to think about is, are you thinking about a question? And I see Joe was successful at getting a poll. So Joe, why don't you get that started? I may have uh, modified the phraseology here, but are you expecting uh, a market correction? Is the idea of a market correction on your mind? Are you thinking about it? Um, if you don't mind, take a moment, go ahead and just uh, respond. You should see a little window on your page here. We'll give you about 10 more seconds. I see there's already been a great response and we'll show you the results in a few moments. Uh, but if you don't mind, uh, I, simply enough, yes, I'm uncertain or no. Um, and if you'd like to provide a little color on your response, feel free to go ahead and type that into the Q&A window. Um, but if you don't mind, just take a few more seconds here and let's go ahead and pull up the results. Thanks for everybody who, uh, who shared. So let's see. And it looks like 62% said yes. Are you expecting uh, or are you uh, thinking about a correction? Mark? Well, that meshes very nicely with uh, our point of view on the market because in the next slide, you're going to see the one year chart of the SPY. This is the Select Spider Sector ETF, uh, rather, the, the Spider ETF that mirrors the SP 500. Um, and we broke down below those trend lines uh, about two weeks ago on very heavy volume. And now we're rallying up in a, a week when the market is typically strong, pre-Labor Day. But um, even though we were up nicely today and recaptured some of that downtrend that was broken, uh, check in money flow, which is our way of measuring institutional buying and selling pressure, it's on every one of your online brokerage platforms, it's on stockcharts.com, Bloomberg and Reuters. It measures institutional buying and selling. Notice how strong it has been since the rally which began after the presidential election. It's now fading. People are concerned about what's coming up in Washington, debt ceilings and uh, budget crisis potentially, although uh, every thing we're hearing out of Washington says they're going to raise the debt ceiling. The budget is a much more dicey thing because it goes along with tax reform. Bottom line is September is typically a bad month for the market leading into September, October bottoms. We think that after that selling, if it happens, that the market will go on to make new highs by the end of the year because the fundamentals are so strong. But if you are one of those people who are thinking about a correction and expecting it, here's one way you can hedge yourself against a September decline. Um, vertical put spreads, we're gonna tell you what they're all about. So you have two ways you can hedge yourself against a decline. You can buy a put option. In this case, we're using the SPY, the spider, uh, as a vehicle to protect ourselves on the downside, but options play rates these on a probability basis. So let's say you expect a three to three and a half percent drop in the market. When I did this this morning, uh, the S&P was 2468, closed around 2475. And you could have bought, and it's a little cheaper now because the market's higher, you could have bought a put spread, buying the 247 put, which expires on October 13th, so it gives you almost seven weeks of protection, selling the 239 put against it. Notice how it's circled in green on options play with a big check mark. Options play likes the probabilities of A, a 3% decline, and B, what the cost of this vertical put spread, bearish vertical put spread can do for you. You spend $200 to protect $25,000 worth of your portfolio. And if the market drops to 2390 or roughly 3.5%, uh, you make 
almost a 300% profit. So that's a great risk reward ratio if you're negative. You can also play that as a strictly speculative play. Now, let's say you expect a bigger decline in the market, somewhere in the neighborhood of five, four to five to six percent. You can put on the same vertical put spread. You increase your cost a little. This is the example on the right. Instead of spending two hundred and three dollars for twenty-five thousand dollars worth of downside participation, you're spending two hundred and forty-two dollars, but you've got the potential for an $858 profit, so a much bigger percentage return. Now, options play rates at a lower probability because based on normal price behavior, a 5% decline is not typical over a six to seven week period. So the bottom line is you can use options play to match up with your own thinking about where the market is headed, and in this case, whether you think there's a 3% decline coming or a 5 or 6% decline, you can profit very, very nicely or protect your portfolio with limited risk because your risk, whether you're buying, as you'll see in a moment, whether you're buying a put option or whether you're doing a vertical bearish put spread is limited to the cost of that spread or the cost of the option. So your risk is limited and you know what your profit potential is. Now, Josh, why don't you take over here and start working through the slides as we show people the options basics? Sure, I'd be happy to do that. So one of the great things about options play and options basics is for new people, it puts right in front of you um, ideas that you can quickly identify as good risk reward and opportunities or not. Options play is going to do some of that work for uh, people who are new at this to make it easier to understand what is a good or bad options candidate. For uh, people who are a little more advanced in options, options play has a great feature in it which allows you to tinker with it so that you can match it up more to, to your style that you've settled on. Uh, it's a, a great tool for around earnings. So earnings has great volatility typically around earnings and options traders. Once they uh, understand a little more about the mechanics of options are able to really profit off of that volatility to make, to make good, low risk, high reward uh, trades and find those kind of opportunities in earnings season. Uh, so one of the things that I do here is I teach people how to use options play. Uh, and in options play, it even has a breakdown in plain English, a, a very plain, plain spoken way of saying, hey, this is, this is your risk. This is your likely return. And th these are the odds that you have of that happening. So you can get a really good sense if this is something that's suitable uh, for you and to help you understand it as, as a new options trader. Again, there are a lot of mechanics. We'll talk a little bit more uh, later about the diversity that options give you, but uh, it's a, a way to help you clear through sort of the cloudiness that can uh, be there for new options traders. So it's a great way to, to get into that. Now, why use options? Well, Options are a fantastic tool for what we call leverage. They allow you to take small investments and make outsized returns. Mark just showed you a slide where you were able to make a near 300% gain on what is relatively small risk, a couple hundred bucks. Uh, that is something that you can find if you, if you know what you're doing and if you're learning it, that's something that you can find in the options market quite a lot. Big gains with small limited risks. Uh, there are in, in options the ability to make unlimited potential rewards for those same small risks. So it's a great way to have little risk, big reward. The other thing that you can do with options is you can skate forwards and backwards, right? Uh, you can go, you can go make money when the market's going up. You can make money when the market's going down. There are even fantastic uh, option strategies where you can make money when the market is flat. It just goes sideways. There's ways to profit off of that as well. So options give you a lot of options. You have a lot of uh, flexibility uh, with what you do. 
Now, one of the things that I like to use it for, one of the, one of the ways that you can be flexible with options is generate income. I talk to a lot of subscribers about doing this. Uh, I have a lot of subscribers that are interested in generating an income off of their already existing portfolio. They already have a portfolio. And there's a ways in the options market that you can generate nice, steady streams of income off of your already existing stock portfolio. So that's a great advantage of options. Finally, what Mark just showed you, you could protect your portfolio. Uh, and I think that this is something that people miss out on quite a bit. Uh, people protect all their big, all these big things, right? I have a house. My house has insurance. It's protected because it's a, it's a, big asset that I have. Uh, we, we even know we have to, it's legal, we even insure our cars, which depreciate. Uh, but not many people learn how to insure what they're relying on for retirement. And options are a great way to protect your portfolio in case of a drop. And Mark just showed you one way which you can do that and identify that pretty easily uh, with Chaken Analytics and our built-in options play feature. Great way to, to learn how to protect your portfolio. Now, can I share something with the audience, Josh? Absolutely, Mark. Yeah, I've thrown Josh a curveball here. I brought in some material that Josh didn't realize was going to be in here, and he's just showed you how good he is working with our clients on the phone, uh, fielding questions that sometimes come out of left field, because Josh hadn't seen any of these slides that he's just talked about so eloquently. So uh, I, I want to uh, give him a shout out because I threw him a big curveball here because I really felt that I wanted us to deliver on our promise of educating you about options before we get into the Chaken methodology. Now, I'm going to take over for a second and just go through some of the basics of options trading. There are simple options trades, which is what most um, beginning options traders should focus on. And the most simple are either buying a put option or buying a call option. And we'll see in a moment um, what that means. But there are a lot of variables to consider. There's something known as the strike price. That's the price at which you're able to buy or sell an option and they're in the money, meaning that strike price is lower than the current price at the money or out of the money. There's the premium that you pay. This is a huge factor in whether you make or lose options because if you pay too much premium, depending on the expiration date, and there are many expiration dates now, weekly, monthly, quarterly, and long-term options, the premium you pay versus the amount of time that the option has till it expires is critical. And it's very important to know the break-even price. What has to happen in the underlying stock before you make a profit in that options? Now, on the screen here is the most simple explanation of puts and calls. A call option gives you the right to buy a stock at a fixed price for a specific period of time. So if you're buying a call option, you're betting that the stock price is going up. A put option is 180 degrees different. A put option gives you the right to sell a given stock at a fixed price for a specific period of time. So if you buy a put option, you're expecting the price to go down. And that's what the two graphs here that come out of options play illustrate. Where's your break even? Well, on a call option, as you can see on the left, your break even happens when the stock moves up. And on a put option, your break even happens when it goes down. Now, Josh, this is a little more um, in the weeds on options. So I'm going to let you take over on this one. Sure. OK, this is a little more in the weeds. Uh, with options, you have, as Mark said, a strike price, which is the price of the shares in the option itself that uh, you are expecting to go up or down. That's the price at which you'd be willing to buy them if they were a call or sell them if they were a put. I always like to think of it, if call options, you call shares in, put options, you put them out, right? Call them in, put them out. That's how I like to tell people to do it. Now, what you're looking at here is uh, two graphs, one on the left for call options, one on the right for put options. And what we did was we just gave you a sense of if you bought this 
call option. Let's just focus on the one on the left for a second. Most people think about things going up. So you buy a call option that's bullish. You expect it to rise. You buy it for the strike. But before you can profit, there's a premium there and there's commissions and they add up a little bit, which means that your break even price is actually higher than the strike price at which you are buying. And you will not profit until we get above that break even number. And that break even number is the equity price. That's the price the equity the stock needs to get to in order for you to profit. Most options traders lose sight of this off the bat. They focus on the premium, but they don't relate it to the actual equity itself. Uh, underneath, if it goes down, you see that you get losses. Now, one of the things about buying options uh, is if you were to buy a call, your, your losses are fixed. There's a maximum amount you can lose. It's the premium. Uh, oftentimes, people will put in what's called a stop loss so they don't lose the entire investment. Uh, that way, they're even able to make, uh, they're, made, they're able to make an even smaller uh, risk against the same large reward. Now, the one on the right side, uh, the put option, as Mark said, it's just to flip it around 180 degrees. In this case, it's a, it's a bet, it's a speculation that a stock is going to drop in price if you buy a put option that is a bearish uh, position. And you just flip it around. You have your strike price. And then what you have to do is take into consideration your premium and your commissions before you can figure out what that break even number is. In a put case, the break even number is lower than the strike. Remember, we're, we're bearish in buying a put. Same sort of risk above that you see below on the call, right? And the profit down. Uh, you can profit theoretically uh, limited basically to, it goes to zero. That's as low as, as a stock can go, it can go to zero. So on a put, you can make the difference between your break even and zero, although I think most people find that to be unreasonable. But you still have big outside gains for smaller risks. You just have to understand that that premium the commissions are gonna make it so that your break even price is actually farther than your strike in the option itself. So having showed you the basics, I just wanna show you how much information goes into determining what the option premium is. The option premium is, is the price that you pay for the stock. Uh, and there's a whole set of variables. The good news is you don't have to know a lot about this if you use a program like Options Play. It does all of this analysis for you. So intrinsic value, how much is the options worth? Time value, how much is remaining? All critical variables that can really take a lot of time. And if you're new at this, they can be very daunting. That's the beauty of options play. Embedded and Shaken Analytics does all of this analysis for you. Now, here's a chart that is the essence of options trading. And it's why 95% of options traders lose money because options are a wasting asset. They expire at a fixed date. And if they don't have value, meaning that the price of the option relative to the price of the stock doesn't benefit your bullish or bearish trade, that option is going to be at zero. And the problem with most options traders is they buy options with a very short duration, meaning that the chart that we're looking at, which is called time decay, also referred to as premium erosion, is working against them. The longer you have until an options expire, the slower the time decay. Most options traders go to the right. And now with the advent of weekly options and bi-weekly options, they're really putting the uh, odds against them because you've, they've got to be right almost immediately. And, and there are a lot of people out there who are promoting services. Some of them work, some of them don't. Using weekly options, it's, it is gambling. I used People used to say options are gambling and because of some of the things that Josh said about protecting your portfolio, limited risk, I always push back on that. But with the advent of weekly options, if you're buying weekly options, you're gambling. You're gambling that you know where that stock's going within five days. And uh, I've got to tell you, anybody who claims to know that 
except in highly specialized cases during earnings season, is not being truthful. So time decay is one of the biggest problems you have as an options trader. You can solve that by going further out and options play takes that into account. Now, we said that buying puts and calls was full, but there's there's another simpler strategy that's better, and typically options play will gravitate toward it when it suggests ideas for you, just as it did in that SBY trade. These are known as vertical spreads, either put or call spreads, and they tend to be cheaper than buying options outright. And if you give yourself a little bit of time, and usually options play goes out about six weeks, when it chooses an options with, it, with its probability-based computer program, a vertical spread can really help you. And we're going to show you some examples, both historic and current, of vertical put and call spreads that have worked out and why they are better than call options. So here's an example of one of them. And Josh, you were going to use this as an example. So I put it here in the beginning of the uh, webinar. Why don't you go into that? Because the spread is on the next slide. Sure. Uh, so this is something that, Mark, you've been talking about for a long, long time now, which is the uh, bearishness in the auto industry, especially the parts uh, providers. So uh, advanced auto parts and similar similar companies. And you can see this is a stock that uh, Chicken Analytics is, is very bearish on. Uh, we have a high likelihood of underperforming. Uh, we'll talk more about the chart in front of us, but this is kind of a, an ideal bearish setup. Now you can see uh, where we have the drop circled. Uh, that actually happened, we were able to predict that ahead of earnings, so you could have taken advantage of that. Now with a single put, a simple put, you could have um, bought a put for a set amount of time out, would have given you enough time to capture that move, and then you would have had a nice leveraged play on the drop on advanced auto parts. Uh, we happen to have another sell signal that just showed up today, which indicates that we have yet another good opportunity, low risk, high opportunity, uh, maybe forming for us here to again, take advantage of the next leg lower. In the options market, the couple ways you can play that, um, one of the simplest ways is just buying a put. Another one is going with the vertical. Uh, and I, we'll talk a little bit more about the structure of a vertical coming up. So uh, you can see this has a sloping down trend line. We've uh, managed to bounce a little bit. Dead count bounce is, I think, the technical term for that back to the middle line there, which is a 21 EMA. Uh, and then we would expect as this is overbought, it'll roll back over and you'll have an opportunity to play the downside once again in this very bearish stock, which we expect Josh, to continue lower. Josh, let me just lower. jump in and summarize. Josh, can you hear me? Yes. Hey, Mark. Let me just jump in and summarize this chart before we go to the option strategy. We wanted to really get you options education before we talked about check and analytics, but it's important to realize that what Josh was talking about is that this chart has all the information you need to form an opinion about the stock. At the bottom of the chart is a ribbon which goes from red to yellow to green. And that's the Chaikin Power Gauge Rating, our multi-factor quantitative model that's been so successful over the last six years at identifying stocks like advanced auto parts that are likely to go down and stocks in the semiconductor sector and the healthcare sector that are likely to go up. Right above that is our relative strength indicator. We're going to go into this in depth. Tells you whether a stock is underperforming or outperforming the market. And then Shaken money flow, which as we mentioned earlier, measures institutional buying and selling. So if you're going to be putting on a bearish position, either buying a put option or a vertical bearish put spread, you want all three things to line up. You want the power gauge to be bearish. You'd like relative strength to be weak, meaning the stock is underperforming the market. And you want to see a pattern of distribution like we saw ahead of that earnings report, even though some wishful thinkers bought it. Uh, they were wrong. And what we're going to look at now, and Josh identified this as an opportunity, is the fact that we had one of our six pairs of buy and sell signals trigger uh, going into today's price action. Uh, it's our overbought sell signal. And because of that, Josh singled out 
this vertical put spread. So why don't you briefly tell them what this vertical put spread is meant to do and how you put it on, Josh. Sure. So a vertical put spread is a bearish position that you would put on if you were expecting a, uh, a move of a certain distance. And it's a way to lower your risk when you do this. So you have three panels in the middle going across the screen. On the left has a 108. The middle has a 93. On the right has 125. That's the vertical. The vertical here is we are going to purchase the 100 strike and we are going to sell the 85 strike. This would give us an opportunity to take in about 185% return on our $475 investment if uh, advanced auto parts gets down to around 100 and there's some option mechanics that could make it uh, a little more, a little less, but about that. So if you got down to about 100, you'd be looking at a fairly nice return. Now we would do this. No, that's that's actually um, 85 in this case, Josh. Oh, sorry, I flipped them. I did list the 85 first. I just read it off first. I'm sorry, Mark. Um, so if it gets down to 85, you're, this is a, a bearish position that would uh, take advantage of a move from current price just under 100 down to 85. Now, in the middle, you'll see, just the single put and it has a and score the, the bottom line i'm sorry yeah oh i just wanted to make note that the reason we add the vertical in is because it does lower your risk you can see that you've reduced your risk by something like 18 percent just by adding on that lower strike the 85 strike go ahead mark So that's the beauty of the vertical. You get to take advantage of a, a specific move that, that we're anticipating, uh, and it's a low risk way of getting an outside return. So uh, the third uh, thing we'd like to talk about, we've talked about buying puts and calls using vertical uh, bullish or bearish spreads is writing covered calls. You write a covered call to enhance your return. You give up some of the upside in the individual stock, but you bring in some premium and that generates income. And you can do this in two ways. You can write a call against the stock that you already own, where you have a profit and are looking to uh, generate Make and maybe make a big profit, or you can buy a stock and then write a call at the same time. That's called writing covered calls, and you do that to enhance returns. And here's that the aerospace group has been very, very strong. The military is going to be rebuilt under the Trump administration. We've got crises around the world. And, and companies like L3 and the Aerospace Defense Group have been making new highs. And this is a stock that we've talked about on prior webinars. It's been featured in Insights Newsletter. So, capital games. L3 was trading at Let's say you bought the stock at some upside potential, but you'd also like to generate a dividend, but the yield is a paltry 1.65%. Now that's not paltry compared to the treasury bill rate, but it's in general, not what income investors are looking for. So at the same time you buy L3 at 180, 184, you simultaneously sell a covered call, meaning that you have just bought the stock with a strike price of 185. In this case, the call expires on October 20th. So this trade has about seven weeks to go, 50 days till expiration. This is sort of the sweet spot that options play zeros in on. And what's your potential here? Well, you're giving someone the right to buy the stock that you've just bought just below 182 at a price of 185. So that's 
uh, about $3 or roughly 1.5%, 1.7% higher. But the premium that you're receiving is $350. Now you get to keep that. So really what you're doing is setting up a position where you're willing to sell the stock at 188 and a half, which is about a four and a half to 5% return if it moves up over the next seven weeks. But let's say it doesn't move up. Let's say it goes sideways. You get to keep that $350 premium if the stock stays below 185 and if you could repeat that every two months, that would be a 14% return in addition to the dividend of 1.65. So Josh said earlier, there are ways to make money in options if it goes sideways. In this case, we expect L3 to go up. The ideal situation is it's trading right at 185 when the option is due to expire on October 20th. In that case, you get to keep the stock, keep the premium, and do what's known as rinse and repeat. Wait for an opportunity to sell another covered call, ideally at a higher strike price, generating the potential for capital gains and the income that you receive from the options premium. So writing covered calls can be really good. And we got this wonderful testimonial from Jim Davidson about a year ago. Jim said a better night's sleep and impressive returns. After getting hammered in the August 15 correction, I decided to take advantage of what Chaken Analytics really offers. That is a better night's sleep and some impressive returns. Rather than swinging for the fences and striking out, I've learned to do what the system tells me to do and to enjoy my 16% return. And that's very close to the 14 uh, plus dividend. It's exactly 16% that this option strategy had. Thanks to the Chaken team, and Josh was part of that effort, for giving my confidence and a good night's sleep back to that. And I'd be remiss if I didn't also thank Joe Bacella, who uh, played a critical role in turning Jim around. So uh, we've been doing this for years for our clients, and this is just one example of that. Now, everything we're talking about here, all these graphs, all this information, is a lot to deal with. We call this information overload. And Josh is gonna to speak to this in a minute, but our solution to information overload is Chaken Analytics for both iPad and desktop with Options Play built into our desktop app. Now, Josh, you haven't seen the flow here, but I think you're gonna very quickly see what we're getting at. Why don't you take over and just summarize what we're looking at on this screen in terms of complexity and possibilities. Sure, so uh, on the left column, uh, you will see that we have underlying asset alone. So that's if you're just looking at being long or short the stock. And then below that, we have a list of option strategies. On the right column is your market outlook for that strategy. And so if you thought that the market is moving higher, a long call would be appropriate for that. Uh, if you were looking to lower your cost basis uh, or hedge a long position, a covered call or married put would be the appropriate strategy for that. Uh, there's also other strategies toward the bottom, which are a little more advanced strategies. So straddle strangles and butterflies are uh, generally considered more advanced strategies. Uh, and those are market neutral strategies. Those are some of the ones I was talking about where you can make money if the market is just flat or your stock just is range bound, which often happens to people. And one of the problems they have is they don't buy enough time in the first place, which Mark spoke to earlier. So you can see here all kinds of different strategies on the left for all kinds of various market conditions on the right. There's, there's almost any market condition has a... Uh, uh, an appropriate option strategy to profit off of it. And that's one of the beauties of the options market. I think it's one of the reasons why I was attracted to it in the first place. And because there are so many strategies and for newer options traders, they become overwhelming. We've integrated options play into Chaken Analytics. And these are three screens from the options play module. You've seen the one on the left already, which 
auto generates ideas based on whether you're bullish or bearish on a given stock or trying to generate income. There's a trading simulator. There's a profit and loss simulator. We take all the complexity out. Options Play does that for you. And you can find strategies that suit your needs, that meet your um, opinions about where stocks in the market are headed and which meet your risk reward strategies. So really options play cuts through the clutter. And I know that's one of the things that um, Josh is gonna talk about here when he talks about the challenges that so many options traders are facing today. Yeah, absolutely, Mark. Being able to cut through the clutter and be able to just cut through a lot of the noise that is out there is a big issue for uh, many people, many, many people. Um, and and there, there are many challenges that the individual investor faces. One is understanding direction, which Mark has effectively, I think, solved for any Chicken Analytics uh, subscriber. It gives you a high probability toward directionality. Another common thing that I hear often is timing when to get in and when to get out. Uh, I, uh, I like to say that uh, people in the market oftentimes are like kids at the swimming pool. They never want to get out. They're having so much fun. They never want to get out. They stay until they're, they're blue in the face. So you have to understand when the right time to get in and get out is. So cutting through the clutter, information overload is, is big, but we help you simplify it. One of the great things I like about the JK Analytics workspace is everything I need is on that one single screen for me to be able to determine what is the direction that is likely to occur and where are my high probability entry and exit points. And because it's all on one screen, I don't have to worry about information overload. There's, there's a set amount of information and that's all I need. A lot of people, they get bombarded with TV and you know what they're seeing online. And uh, if, I mean, if you have uh, a broker, you could click on those indicators and there's probably a thousand indicators you can slap on. Which one do you need to slap on? Which one's right for me? It gets overwhelming, I understand. I, I talk to, I coach a lot of people on this. And really cutting through the clutter, being able to have a systematic approach is critical. Being able to do a repeatable process is, I think, uh, very important to being a successful options trader or stock trader for that matter, but we're going to focus on options. It's, it's very critical, especially in options because they're leveraged and they move. Uh, and so you really need to be able to hone in on exactly what you want to do, understand what is the likely direction, and understand where are the likely entry and exit points. And we do that for you with Chaking Analytics. Yeah, and this is a nice segue into the next slide, which is how Chaking Analytics helps options traders trade more profitably. We do that by solving the one problem that afflicts 95% of options traders they don't understand the importance of the directional edge. And Josh just alluded to that. What is the directional edge? It's something that you know that tells you with a good, reliable degree of probability which way a stock is headed. Because if you don't know where a stock is headed and you're making bets by putting on options positions that depend on a stock going up or down, you've lost. And that's what 95% of options traders don't understand. So Chaken Analytics gives you the directional edge you need by combining fundamentals with technicals into a quantitative model and then providing six pairs of buy and sell signals for better exits and entries. So having covered the basics of options trading, let's cover the basics of Chaken Analytics. And the power gauge rating is the centerpiece of everything we do at Chaken Analytics because as Josh so eloquently said, it gives you directionality. But it does it in a very simple way because we output it as a gauge or a ribbon on the screen as you saw in that chart of advanced auto parts. It's a simple display, but under the surface, a lot's going on. We're crunching a lot of numbers for you in the same way that options play crunches a lot of options data. And during earnings season, the power gauge rating can be your GPS. And you've already seen an advanced look at that potential put trade in advanced auto parts back in April, right before earnings were due to be reported. So what is the Chaken power gauge rating? Well, John Carter, who's one of the best pure traders on the planet, 
has a trading room and a uh, company called Simpler Trading. Learned about the check and power gauge rating about a year and a half ago. And he looked at it and he says, there are a lot of hyped up tools out there. But when I find something interesting, I'll let you know about it. And he was talking to his subscribers. So you can imagine that a single tool that combines 20 plus technical and fundamental factors to anticipate a stock's potential got my attention. It's called the Chaikin Power Gauge Rating. And at first glance, I thought this was an objective, awesome meter for stocks. So let's see what got John Carter so excited. The Chaikin Power Gauge Rating consists of four primary factors that cover financials, earnings, technicals, and expert opinions. And within each of those four factors, there are 20 sub-factors. And these sub-factors represent what institutional investors who are successful over long periods of time look at every day before they make buy and sell decisions. And this is why the mentoring that I got from either associates or clients was so important when I went out to develop the power gauge rating in 2010. Because after the financial collapse of 08, people were distraught. Their retirement plans were down 50 and 60%. They didn't know where to go. The best stocks went down even more than the worst stocks because people who were forced to sell sold what they could where there was liquidity not what they wanted to sell. And people were just confused. Professionals were confused. So the power gauge rating was my solution to that problem. Distilling down the fundamental factors that are so important to knowing whether a stock is likely to outperform or underperform the market, go up or down, whether you're talking about the next six weeks, six months, year, doesn't matter, the power gauge does the heavy lifting for you. So we've got four components that are not equally weighted. Financials are 35% of the model, they're value oriented. But then we have some shorter term factors like earnings surprise, earnings estimate revisions, insider buying, short interest, and industry group relative strength, which is so important. Josh referred to the fact that the auto parts industry, we identified in our weekly market letter back in April, as weak and these stocks are down 40 and 50% since April. And they were already down at that point in time. So the power gauge rating has a proven record of success. What's the performance been? Well, in 2016, the very bullish stocks using the Russell 3000 as a universe, up 32%, the very bearish stocks up only 9%. If you can capture that spread every year, avoid the bearish, focus on the bullish, you're going to be way ahead of the game. Now, in 2015, it was really important to have a tool like the power gauge rating. Why was that? Because energy stocks were in their own bear market. We'll see an example of that in a little bit. Small cap stocks were in a bear market in 2014 and 15 because a lot of energy stocks were in the small cap sector, but other small caps were affected as well. So the very bearish stocks in the Chaikin Power Gauge rating in the Russell 3000 index, these are the 3000 largest stocks in America, down 17%. If you own Range Resources or Kinder Morgan or any of the railroad stocks, you are in that bucket. Very bullish stocks were flat, which is what the market did. So in bull and bear markets, we actually don't care. Bull or bear, we don't care. The Power Gauge rating works. And the proof of that are two partnerships that we have, one with NASDAQ and one with New York Life Insurance, the largest mutual insurance company in America, and their Index IQ and Mainstay Investment subsidiary. We created three co-branded NASDAQ check and indices three and a half years ago. They're buy and hold indexes based on the NASDAQ large cap, small cap, and dividend achiever. And in February, Index IQ, which is a subsidiary of New York Life, licensed all three indexes for the purpose of launching exchange traded funds. And the first one was launched in May of this year. This is not meant to be an endorsement to buy or sell that ETF, symbol is CSML, but it is the most successful multi-factor launch of an ETF in 2017. It has over $180 million in assets in just three months. That's the third most successful of the 98 ETFs that have been launched 
in 2017 in terms of assets under management. Now, why is this important? Because both NASDAQ and New York Life Insurance did their due diligence to make sure that the power gauge rating met their criteria for creating portfolios. So if it's good enough for NASDAQ and New York Life and First Trust, which has created unit investment trusts using the Chaikin methodology with our assistance, hopefully it can help you as well. So I'd like to start the practical side of the Chaikin analytics portion of this webinar by zeroing in on a pattern that we call ch classic Chaikin bulls. The power gauge rating, our fundamental go-to 20-factor model is green or bullish. The price is trending up. Stock is outperforming the market and Chaikin money flow is strong, indicating that the institutions are buying it. Our poster child, applied materials. Semiconductor equipment manufacturer was leading the market to new highs until just recently reporting a series of positive earning surprises. Remember, that's one of the 20 factors in the model, and we color code the earnings reports to tell you whether the company exceeded Wall Street expectations or disappointed, and when they exceed expectations, stocks typically move higher. And then on the screen, we have one of our six pairs of buy and sell signals, our relative strength buy signal. All of the signals, in Chaikin Analytics are explained on our website. Whether you're a visitor or a subscriber, we explain the basis for it. And they're all filtered by either the power gauge rating or Chaikin relative strength, which is right above the ribbon. Again, we've converted the numbers that underlie a relative strength computation into a red-green heat map, making it really easy to analyze. So on this one-year chart, of applied materials, everything is lined up. It's what Warren Buffett calls the ideal setup or fat pitch. Power gauge was bullish. The stock was outperforming the market. It was in an uptrend. Chaikin money flow told you the institutions were accumulating the stock because it stayed green. Sorry about that. And then along the way, you got these buy signals. Great spot to put on a bullish options position a vertical call spread or an outright call purchase. Now, the beauty of this relative strength buy signal is it tends to last four to eight weeks. Notice on the chart, there's persistent price movement after these signals, price acceleration. Now, what's happened on the right side of the chart is you've got another relative strength buy. The stock rallied, but it failed. And even though this, the market made a very nice advance today, there was profit taking in the semiconductor stocks. And look at Chaikin money flow. It's red when it should be green. It's a pattern we call a bearish money flow alert. So the stock has gotten overbought, meaning that it's moved up in price on a short-term basis, and money flow is not confirming it. That tells me that the institutions are taking their profits. So if I bought an options position on that relative strength buy signal here as I would have on everyone before that, I'm going to get out right now. I'm not going to wait for four to eight weeks because as Josh said, timing is on everybody's mind and when to sell is absolutely critical. We're going to show you another example of a small cap semiconductor stock where we got a really good warning that you, the, the game was over. Now, it's nice to know that profitable patterns to be able to find them. So I use this screen on a webinar that I did a couple of weeks ago to screen for classic Chaikin bulls. Use the Russell 3000 as my universe, required that the power gauge rating be very bullish, so it's in the top 10% of all stocks. Look for companies with a history of positive earnings surprises, where money flow and relative strength, the two go-to Chaikin technical indicators, were positive, strong over the last three months. And then I was just looking at large and mid cap stocks because those are the best for options trading because they're the most liquid. I distilled a universe of 3000 stocks down to 17 names. Imagine how much easier it is to find profitable trades 
if you're only looking at 17 stocks instead of 3,000. The screening process is absolutely critical to finding winning stocks. And a couple of stocks that are on this screen from probably a month ago, like Anthem Health, we're going to use uh, as further examples in the webinar. Now, we have a pattern we call classic shake and bears, and that's the exact opposite. Power gauge rating is bearish, stocks trending down, relative price performance is weak, and shake and money flow is weak, indicating the institutions are selling the stock. So money flow is red, not green. So our poster child for the last 10 months for classic shake and bear has been Under Armour. This is a broken stock. It's a fallen angel. And these are the best candidates for put purchase on the planet. A stock that was a favorite of Wall Street, the hedge funds and the momentum investors as Under Armour was, that starts to break down where Chaikin power gauge rating is red and it has been for a whole year, where it's been underperforming the market. So the market is agreeing with the model and where the institutions have been selling. And we know that really simply because the Chaikin money flow stayed red even when the stock rallied. So when you got these relative strengths sell signals, you pay attention. You put on a put position. You make sure that this stock isn't in your 401k plan. And when you hear on CNBC that this stock is now a value buy, uh, it's been overdone on the downside, you ignore that because until the market and the power gauge tell you otherwise, this is a stock to avoid, and you actually want to look for put buying opportunities. Now, this stock was in the process of bottoming out, but the power gauge stayed bearish, and then they reported a negative earnings surprise. There was a pattern of them. Go back here, October, bearish earnings surprise, gap down. February, bearish earnings surprise, two signals ahead of that, gap down. They actually exceeded earnings estimates, but they gave poor guidance, gap down. And then yet again, gap down just two and a half weeks ago. And then to pour salt on the wound, Kevin Garnett said, nobody wears Under Armour sneakers. Nobody good wears these sneakers. And the stock dropped another 4%. Silly reason for a stock to drop, but that's what happened. New 52-week low with the market banging up against 52-week all-time highs. These are the stocks you want to avoid, and they're great put candidates. Now, here's a current example of that. Schlumberger is in the energy sector. We have a chart of the XLE, the Select Spider Sector Energy ETF. I don't know if we put it into the deck because we didn't want to have too much information in here, but energy stocks have been bearish since February. Back in 2014, energy stocks turned bearish in Chaikin Analytics beginning in January, accelerating in September of 14, all the way down to the bottom in February of 16. Bear market and energy in the middle of a, one of the largest bull markets in history. So when you see a stock like Schlumberger, one of the largest, the largest stock in the oil, machinery, services, and drilling industry. With a bearish rating in a bearish industry group, what do you want to do? You want to wait for a signal. And we have a way for you to monitor signals with our alerts view and our signals are on the screen. When you're looking at a stock, you put them up. You can see if a signal is triggered on a given day and any stock you're following and then look at it on the screen. And there was a wonderful opportunity ahead of the earnings report to buy a put option back here in March. And there's another opportunity today as the stock has gone sideways and triggered another sell signal. So I'm going to go over the April trade because this came from a webinar just like this. When Schlumberger was trading at 79, notice it's trading now at around 63. But Schlumberger was 79. It had triggered a sell signal. It was due to report earnings. And we 
used options play to generate this bearish vertical put spread. Notice how it has a 134 rating with a check mark circled in green. And in the middle, the outright purchase of a call option only has an 88 score. Now, the reason is probabilities. You spend $172 on a bearish vertical put spread. That's your whole risk. And that could be worth $5. In this case, if the stock was trading at or below 74 on May 26th. Using the put outright, your risk reward ratio wasn't as good. Here you could spend 172 to make 318 actually 368, and with the put option, much lower odds. So let's go back and see what happened. Schlumberger dropped, and it was way below that lower strike price. So you netted that whole gain very, very quickly right after earnings were reported. Now, Josh has identified a put spread for you right now. Now, again, not recommending that you do this. This is an example only. But if Schlumberger acts similarly to this, then here's what would happen. Josh, why don't you briefly explain this spread? Sure. So what we're looking to do here is buy a 63 and a half strike on Schlumberger that will expire in October. So we're giving ourselves about six weeks for this move to occur, which is a, an appropriate amount of time for a, a trade like this. And then we're gonna sell against that the 59 and a half strike, which lowers our cost basis, it lowers our risk. We went from the uh, single one of costing us uh, $187 and we dropped that down to just 134 bucks. That's a sixty dollars. That's almost thirty-three percent that we reduced our initial risk right off the bat. Not only that, but you'll see we also stand now because we reduced that risk. And this gets a little in the weeds, but it reduces our break-even number. It makes it so the break-even number is closer to our current price. That helps us, gives us higher odds of success. And you'll see the return is also that much bigger because now you have more room to go. So this is one that I identified today. I got to say, Mark, that these, uh, I like these sell signals. They pop up right before uh, I do webinars. I happen to take the uh, one just before earnings in July as I was doing research for another webinar that I was on. And as you can see, worked out very well. I would like to say I got a couple of calls after that because you saw Schlumberger kept going against me for a little bit. And people would call me up and say, Josh, what are you doing? What are you doing? And I said, I'm watching the power gauge and the relative strength at the bottom, and they tell me that this thing's going low, lower. So I'm going to have patience, and it paid. And on, the, and on that rally, the money flow barely ticked into the green. So the institutions really weren't buying the stock. They were actually selling it under the cover of strength. So the basic yeah. premise of this trade is if Schlumberger drops four points from 63.5 to 59, which is basically a 7%, less than a 7% move. Look at the profit potential. What's the number down there, Josh, on the right? Oh, it's over 200%. So 200% on a 7, on a 6% drop in the stock, that's what's known as leverage. Yep. And you saw that again with the uh, with Mark showed you right off the bat on the hedging a, uh, a decline in the overall market that you could take small risks to make these big gains. All right, so let's move along because right. um, we've got a little more to cover. We have a pattern that we've been talking about, but we're going to put a name on it. It's called the dynamic duo. It's a combination of the fundamental indicator, Chaik and relative strength, and our go-to technical indicator. I'm sorry, the Chaik and power gauge rating, and our go-to indi uh, technical indicator, Chaik and relative strength. The dynamic duo finds big winners and losers. And that means that you can get superior returns in the options market if you're on the right side of the dynamic duo. So here's an example. It was in our screen for classic Chaik and Bulls. Anthem Health turned around in November, right after the election, when the Trump victory was perceived as a sigh of relief for the healthcare industry. And Anthem Health went from 130 to 195 with the Chaik and Power Gauge bullish. Institutions buying it day in and day out. How do we know that? Shaken money flow is consistently green. 
Buy signals along the way, in this case, are oversold buy signal, positive earning surprises, which were buying opportunities. And this is a stock that continues to trade very well, although you can see that institutions are starting to take some profits, but the stock is still maintained an uptrend. So Josh found this uh, vertical call spread. I'm just going to keep my momentum rolling here and go through this, Josh. Sure. Uh, if you think that Anthem Health may start to move up, and in fact, it was already up 1% today, but we pulled these slides earlier in the day, um, you could have put on a vertical call spread, a bullish call spread. Buying the 192 and a half call spread when the stock was roughly 194, so it was in the money, which is a good thing, and selling the 205 call spread. So what are you doing here? You're betting that the stock is going to go from 194 to 205. Now, that means it would be making a new 52-week high, which is consistent with what it's done over the last 12 months. So if the uptrend is maintained in Anthem Health, the market kicks in, the stock goes up, makes a new high above 200, this spread is gonna be very profitable. Now, Dynamic Duo also works on the downside. This is an example. Tessero, a drug stock, whole series of sell signals after the power gauge and relative strength turn bearish. When relative strength turns bearish after being bullish, we call that a bearish personality change. Very important to re remember to, to look for that because when you get a bearish personality change, you need to know about it because you've got to change your opinion on the stock. Now, here's a stock going back a couple of years that looked a lot like to sorrow. It's Yelp. And back in 2015, I made Yelp my bearish stock of the week in my weekly market letter. And then we did a webinar right ahead of earnings and recommended put trades. Now this chart goes back to 2014-15. And sure enough, Yelp disappointed right where that red arrow is, is when I recommended the put trade. Four days later, they reported earnings. The stock gapped down from 32 all the way to 20 over a course of a couple of weeks. And we got this wonderful testimonial just two years ago from Mike T. Netted $17,408 in profit this morning. I found more success in the past two weeks using Chaken than I've had the rest of the year. I had the biggest winner of the year today on Yelp earnings based on Mark's bearish play of the week. Risk 7,000, made 17,000. Now, Mike T actually sent us his trading blotter. This is, I think, from Interactive Brokers. And he was a fairly sophisticated options trader because he put on three different options put positions. This was before we had options play integrated into Chaken Analytics. That happened in November of 2015 less than two years ago. So if you were looking at Yelp as a potential put trade, you didn't have to be as smart as Mike T. You could have put this trade on just using the options play ideas module. So now let's move on to something Josh talked about, which is how you can use options during earnings season on both the long and the short side. I mentioned that we had a chart of the XLE, the Select Spider Sector Energy ETF. These are all the large cap energy stocks in the S&P 500. Now, I mentioned that in September of 2014, the relative strength turned bearish. It happened again here in late January of 17. We had a bearish personality change. Relative strength went from green to red. And at that point, you want to have every one of your energy stocks under the microscope. You want to make sure that if you're in an energy stock, there's a damn good reason to be there. And in general, if the power gauge rating is bearish as, you, as it was on Schlumberger and the sector turns bearish in a relative strength and institutions are selling, you want to get out of the sector altogether and look for put opportunities. So what happened to the Energy sector, well, large cap energy stocks dropped from 74 all the way to 62. 15% drop while the market was going down, uh, was going up 
to new all-time highs. Now, you could have found Schlumberger and what put options ahead of earnings. You might have also found Pioneer Natural Resources, one of the big shale producers, shale oil producers, which had a bearish rating and under, was underperforming the market and gave us an overbought sell signal. That's a new eight-day high in a stock with a bearish power gauge rating. It's such a simple symbol, signal, but it's so powerful if you're an options trader. So you could have bought put options or done a vertical bearish put spread with Pioneer trading at about 163. And then after a negative earnings surprise went down to 130. Imagine how profitable a put option could have been if you bought it ahead of earnings. We talked about unlimited potential if you buy options outright. Well, when a stock drops from 163 to 130 in about a week and a half, that normally equates to a four to 600% gain in a put option. It usually means a two to 300% gain in a vertical put spread. Lots of leverage, lots of opportunity if you have that directional edge, that GPS and the power gauge rating is so effective because stocks with a bearish rating are twice as likely to report a negative earnings surprise. Now let's go back in time to that 2014-15 period when the XLE also started underperforming the market and Kinder Morgan was the darling of financial advisors, hedge funds, individual investors. Why? Because they had a 20% dividend yield. But 20% dividend yield doesn't protect you against a 75% drop in an individual stock. And that's what Kinder Morgan did. Between March of 2015 and February of 16, this stock dropped from 40 all the way down to 10. 75% decline. Where that red arrow is, is when you had the bearish personality change along with the bearish power gauge rating. Institutions started selling the stock and it got overbought here in the spring of 2015 with the stock at about 37. And look at taking money flow. It stayed red, not green. That's a perfect put buying opportunity. There wasn't a signal there, but you can spot it. As Josh said, all this information is on one screen. Stock dropped from 37 all the way down to 30, then rallied and did give an overbought sell signal, that's a new eight-day high in a stock with a bearish power gauge rating. You had three of them on the way down. It's never too late to sell a stock or buy a put option if everything is lined up against it. Power gauge rating are the fundamentals and the two technical go-to indicators, relative strength and shake and money flow, along with the signals for timing. It's about as complete a package as you get. Just imagine this methodology compared to what you're currently using. If you're not a Chaken subscriber, hopefully you've got a disciplined methodology because as Josh said, that's absolutely critical. But here's your package right here. It's all here for you. The ideal setup, the fat pitch. You short a stock like this, Warren Buffett would love you. Now Warren Buffett actually started accumulating the stock in the high teens, uh, but it's going nowhere. In spite of Warren Buffett being the most successful value investor, this shows you that value investing and bottom fishing is really difficult. Now, one final example about when to sell. Here's a small cap semiconductor stock, and you play good defense by knowing when to sell. We get that question all the time. Josh probably gets it more than any other question. Here's a stock called Acellus, which we absolutely killed it on, recommending it periodically, including that April buy signal when the stock was trading at 18 on the way to 26. These oversold buy signals worked. And by the way, these have a time frame of five to 10 days, not four to eight weeks, much shorter time frame. Now, how could you have known that it was time to get out if you were long the stock. Well, when it rallied up after this buy signal here, which came at about 22, rallied up to 23.75, look at the money flow. Money flow was negative, should have been positive. That's the tell. 
that's your, your opportunity to get out of the stock. Don't question it. Don't be greedy. Don't expect it's going to go back up over 26. Take your profit. Even if you had a small loss, get out of it because the institutions are no longer accumulating the stock. So again, as with classic chicken bulls and bears, it's nice to know that there are opportunities during earnings season, but how can you capitalize them? Where is the information that you need to make these trades? Well, it's in Chaken Analytics, in our weekly market insights, in our hot list of upcoming earnings reports. And this is a screenshot from my weekly market insights that goes back to um, about a month ago, July 24th. Here were stocks that were due to report earnings that week, including Boeing, which had a big, big move up, Starbucks, which had a move down, Helmwerk and Payne, Seagate, maker of hard disk drives, and Chipotle. So let's see a couple of examples of what happened. Well, Helmwerk and Payne, for the second time, remember we talked about patterns repeating over and over again on Wall Street. We had identified Helmwerk and Payne back in April as vulnerable right ahead of earnings. There was a sell signal that came at around 66. The stock disappointed for the second time in a row dropped all the way under 50. It then rallied up to 56, and we got a sell signal ahead of that earnings report when the stock dropped to a new 52-week low at 42 and a half, and it was at a new 52-week low today. Very profitable vertical put spread opportunity or outright put purchase. Seagate saw a bearish personality change back here in April. With the power gauge turning bearish, you had everything lined up. You got a sell signal ahead of that earnings report. In July, you waited a few days, bearish earnings surprise. The stock dropped from 39 immediately to 31 and a half. And now again, 52 week lows down today with the stock market up very nicely. So plenty of opportunities during earnings season if you're following this discipline methodology. So I'd like to end the webinar by introducing you to our most innovative new product. And because of this product, we were fortunate enough in May to win the Benziga FinTech Award for Best Ideas Platform. There were 19 other entrants in that category and we beat them all. And guess who gave us the award? Kevin O'Leary, Mr. Wonderful from Shark Tank. Very proud of that and proud for all of the 25 people at Chaken Analytics in Philadelphia who contributed to that product and to the success of our customer client relationships. Very important. So what is the product that got Benziga and their voters so excited. Well, it's called our stock discovery engine. It works the same way that Spotify finds you music that's likely to be of interest or Netflix finds you movies and Amazon sort of finds you everything else in life. It's called a relevance-based discovery engine. And the single point of relevance is the power gauge rating. Then we look at industry group strength, then market size, market cap, and the earnings trend, and so forth. It's all done automatically. It's the most cutting edge, advanced idea generating capability on Wall Street. And it puts you in control. It makes you look smart. So back on a webinar I did in May, on May 25th, I seeded the discovery engine with advanced auto parts. We've already seen how bearish that was. And it starts out by giving me a list of stocks that are similar to advanced auto parts. So AutoZone, O'Reilly at 240 on the way to 170. Macy's, other retail stocks that at that point had bearish ratings. Target now has a bullish rating. But it also gave me potential swaps. So if I wanted to stay in the retail sector, it was saying that Best Buy was a potential swap. The stock was 50 and a half and it was due to report earnings in two days. 
So on that webinar, I suggested where that first yellow arrow is, that because Best Buy had triggered an oversold buy signal, this might be an interesting vertical bullish call spread candidate ahead of that earnings report. The earnings came out. They were better than expected. Everybody thought this was going to be death by Amazon for the big box electronics retailer, but they surprised to the upside and the stock spiked up to 60. It pulled back, gave you another chance to buy it. This time it peaked at around 60. And interestingly, they reported another positive earnings surprise just two days ago, but along with it came a comment from the CEO who said, even though our gross margins are fabulous, we may not be able to maintain that. So nothing is perfect on Wall Street. They did report a positive earnings surprise. Would I have bought it? No, and here's the reason. When the earnings report was due out back in May, when we did that webinar, where was the stock? It had been selling off for a month. It was oversold, and it had just triggered a buy signal. Before this earnings report, three months later, where was the stock? It was at a new 52-week high. The odds are not in your favor if you're buying call options with a stock at a new 52-week high. So let's see what happened. We got a testimonial, 257% in 24 hours on earnings. Gave options one more try. I was surprised with the results. A Best Buy options trade was my biggest winner. I didn't think I would ever, I don't think I would have ever attempted an options trade during earnings season without the guidance in your webinars. That's Fraser L. back in May, a new subscriber. This is so easy to master, and with the help of our customer success team, Joe Bacella, Josh Minlin, David, everybody geared toward making you successful, you can experience trades like this. Now, Josh is gonna show you a trade after I give you one more example of seeding the stock discovery engine. I made Starbucks my bearish stock of the week ahead of earnings, it was 58. Turns out the earnings were disappointing. The stock dropped to 53. But I was also looking for other restaurant retailers where there might be a put buying opportunity. And the first stock it identified on July 23rd, when I did a webinar, was Chipotle. The stock was 395 with a very bearish rating. Chipotle had dropped from 490 where it made a new high with check and money flow negative. That's our bearish money flow sell alert. It was trading at 390 when I did that webinar after breaking down and having given us a momentum breakdown signal. You got a bearish personality change. Tell me whether you think the institutions were buying or selling this stock. Look at check and money flow. So ahead of that seeding of the discovery engine for that webinar, it was clear that this was another instance of Chipotle breaking down yet again. And sadly, the E. coli virus resurfaced and the stock dropped from 390 all the way to 300 after a negative earnings report and negative guidance. So there was an enormous opportunity with the stock at 395.83 to put on a put position with limited risk and look at the reward that was just sitting there waiting for the taking. A stock in a weak industry group with a weak technical trend, bearish power gauge rating, bearish relative strength, institution selling. This is what makes for successful options trading. This is your directional edge. So Josh screened for classic bulls this morning. Josh, we're running a little over, so why don't you quickly um, go through the discovery engine that you use today to come up with a put position. Uh, sure, I did a screen, classic bull screen, just put the uh, nice classic bulls in front of me. It takes just a few seconds to sort through hundreds, thousands of stocks and just put in front of me a nice little universe that uh, I can quickly sift through. I came across uh, Fidelity National in there. So I looked at that and I plugged it into our discovery engine. Uh, the discovery engine came out with Xerox, spit Xerox out at me. Uh, so I took a look at Xerox and uh, this would be a uh, low risk, 
high uh, reward opportunity. You have the stock going sideways a little bit. It's worked its way into the middle of the bands, as you can see there. So we're consolidating a little bit with nice, persistent money flow. It tells me institutions are buying. So here's the setup. All right, we're looking to buy the 32 strike. We're then going to turn around and sell the 35 strike. We're looking for just a $3 move. $3 move, uh, 7% maybe on this. And if we get up to 35, you're going to stand to uh, get about 200% on that for a relatively small, under 100 bucks, under 100 bucks for that spread. Uh, so it's a really good low risk, high reward opportunity that you can take uh, in, in short spurts. Right, nice, nice, easy uh, trades that you can swing trade. A lot of people like to swing trade out there, and you can have a lot of confidence in doing these trades because you have everything you need right in front of you on that workspace to give you the confidence to pull the trigger. Again, these are examples, not recommendations, but we've shown you examples going back as far as two and three years ago. We've been helping clients do this consistently for the last four years. And here's an example of an options pro. Tom Gentile writes the options column every month in technical analysis of stocks and commodities. He just bought back his educational firm, Optionetics, that uh, got sold to Charles Schwab. Uh, he's a, a seasoned options educator and trader, and he's gotten hooked on Chaken. He says it gives you the edge you need for successful trading. He's a rule-based trader relies on quantitative analysis, seasonality, and so forth to give him an edge. And he said the superb charting capabilities, but also Mark's proprietary algorithms, not found in charting software that you typically look at, delivers something special. So I highly recommend Chaken Analytics to anyone looking to gain the edge. Again, it's that edge, the directional edge that you need for trading success. Now, we've covered the keys to trading options like an expert to successful options trading. And everything we've showed you is in Chaken Analytics, a proven stock selection system with all the information you need to trade profitably. It features the 20 factor model that combines fundamentals and technicals. You've got the discovery engine for finding great ideas that match your thinking. We've got our screener that we've used and showed you. We've got options play integrated to find good options ideas quickly and easily. Chaken Analytics is normally $1,950 for an annual subscription. You can go to chakenanalytics.com slash options and subscribe, but as a webinar special, as we head into the end of summer, We'd like to take $200 off the price of Chaken Analytics, reducing the cost of an annual subscription to just $1,750. As John Najarian once said, folks, if you can't make the cost of that subscription in your first trade, you shouldn't be trading options. Now, I, I won't go out on a limb like John, but John is also a big fan of Chaken Analytics. $1,750. This offer expires Monday, September 4th, Labor Day at midnight. Chakenanalytics.com slash options or call the number on your screen or sales at Chakenanalytics.com if you have a question. Now, in addition to everything you've seen, you get intraday charts, earnings alerts and details, and my weekly market insights. Plus, as a subscriber to Chaken Analytics, when you subscribe, you get small group tutorials to help you get set up and use the features of Chaken Analytics. You get unlimited training and support. If you need it, you get one-on-one -on -one coaching and you get my partner John Schlitz's daily morning insights delivered to your inbox so you don't have to be glued to CNBC before the opening to know what's been going on. Now, one final testimonial, and this is the king of all testimonials, and Josh can tell you it's real because Josh has been working with Ken. From 235,000 to a million two in seven months, I've been trading stock options for many years with not much success. On January 4th, 2017, I found your system. I started the year with 235,000, and as of today, which was July 30th, my net liquidation value in my account is $1,205,000. I would not have been able to achieve this 
without your system. And I know Josh has been talking to Ken and giving him some one-on-one -on -one mentoring, and it's made all the difference. So Josh, thank you for that. I'm sure Ken would thank you if he was on the webinar. Maybe he is. So Chaken Analytics at $1,750 is a bargain. But we're going to give you a compelling offer, as the Godfather would say, an offer you can't refuse. If you subscribe by midnight tonight, we'll take an additional $100 off the cost of Chaken Analytics, reducing the price to $1,650, but you have to subscribe by midnight tonight. We've been very, very um, flexible in terms of fudging that number, but my head of sales tells me that, Mark, it's not fair to people who subscribe early to then give this special price three or four or five days later. So we're really going to be rigid about this. $16.50 if you subscribe by midnight tonight. Go to chakenanalytics.com slash options. Joe Bacella is putting that up in the chat window right now. You can just click on that. I'd like to thank Josh for an outstanding job. He really um, went with the flow, took a deck that he hadn't really seen before, and turned it into a very eloquent, options educational experience. So thank you, Josh. Thank you so much, Mark. I appreciate that. It was a pleasure being with everybody today, and I look forward to working with many of you in the near future. So Joe, why don't you take it back and wrap up the webinar? You got it. So again, we want to thank everybody for joining us. Thanks for sticking with us. I know uh, we've, we've had better internet connection in the past, but anyways, I know there was a lot of great content available throughout our uh, the option session for tonight. Um, just as Mark mentioned, the link directly for Chaken Analytics is available in your chat window right now. Again, that's chakenanalytics.com forward slash options. It'll take you right to the page. I made the mistake myself. I, I should tell you, um, the Promo code will automatically be applied, which is great because I used the website earlier this week where it didn't apply and the code didn't get on there. So um, for us, though, we're going to make sure that doesn't happen to you. Once you go to chakenanalytics.com, you'll see that discount code. Uh, Thursday, which is today, uh, we are having a great webinar tomorrow afternoon at 2 o'clock. This is our onboard session. It is a great way to get started and really get dirty with the program. Understand how to create different lists, uh, know how to find different ideas, um, and really just get your feet wet. So again, that's tomorrow, and there's no better way to take advantage of that um, than, of course, with uh, the discounted offer from Mark and Josh from tonight. Um, so with that said, we want to thank you again for coming. Again, chakenanalytics.com forward slash options, or you can give us a call at 877-978-6257. In the meantime, have a wonderful evening, and we will see you on tomorrow's onboard session.